one of the most interesting players uh, this season. In fact, coming into the year, I asked you, give me a list of the most interesting guys. He made your short list. He goes for 13 points, six rebounds, two assists, one block. His defense was phenomenal last night. What is it about Evan Mobley that makes that you find so fascinating this season? Well, I look for guys that could be tipping points, right? The guys that can help shift the balance of power for a team. And so you look, where is the most growth when you look at that that next tier of teams, right? Who can that be? Evan Mobley clearly is a guy for, for them. And I think even league-wide, he's one of the guys I look at because I just still think there is so much more there offensively for Evan Mobley to go grab. Now, it's not necessarily – translating here early in the year and even even just looking at his numbers they're very sure. similar to what he did a year ago his rebounding numbers are are the highest they've been of his career he's actually his block shots are up his his rim contests are up so he's affecting the game i think more defensively offensively not really happening to that extent look and part of it is you got two ball dominant guards that yep. take a lot of shots okay and then when they don't shoot it You've got these new three-point shooters you've added that are going to definitely shoot it if they get their hands on it. So you say, well, where right. is that going to come from? I think part of it is a personality, right, on the part of Evan Mobley. And I think he's a guy – when he came into the league, Adam, I thought the, a good comparison, I thought he could be like a, sort of like a Chris Bosh type of player. Um, I thought that was a good comparison. His stroke, similar. I think he can eventually take it out to be a consistent three-point shooter with his stroke, which Chris Bosh became when she right. got to Miami, Miami, right? I don't know that he'll ever be as good as Chris Bosh was with his back to the basket on the low post or mid post like he was in Toronto when they ran their offense through him and he was, you know, he could dominate anybody one-on-one -on -one down there because he was so quick. I don't know if he'll be that, but I do think he's a guy that can hunt shots a little bit more than he does now. I feel like everything he gets are crumbs. It's all yep. an afterthought for them offensively. Yeah. That's where the progression has to happen for Evan Mobley. I think there's more there. Haven't seen it yet early in the year, but he's a fascinating guy to keep an eye on for that reason. And if he gets that element with what else they have on this team and how good they are defensively, man, that does make Cleveland a lot more interesting. So he's the guy you want to look at. Can he grab that next rung on the ladder offensively? Remains to be seen. How much of this do you think his rookie season, they have one team, Darius Garland's there, you know, he's, it's a rookie season, but he's clearly a building block. Then you bring in some other players and they, you add a different, a completely different roster around him. How much do you think is maybe he would have benefited from like two, three years of being on a bad team where he gets to explore those things as opposed to he had to fit in now to other star players. How much do you think that affected his development? That's a very good point. And I think, you know, I'll use an analogy to Kyle Kuzma. I, I always talk about Kyle Kuzma, like when he was with the Lakers and, you know, think about his first couple of years in the league, he got up like 17 a game and they were bad. Right. Yeah. And all of a sudden overnight, like he wakes up one morning and somebody texts him and said, Oh, by the way, we got LeBron and we got AD. We expect to win a title right. this year. So now you're going to come off the bench right. and you're going to cut your shot attempts in half and hope you're going to be happy with that. And it's a major adjustment for a young player. So I, th I think there's some truth to what you're saying. When you're on a bad team and you come into the league, and you're a high pick, obviously there's a lot more freedom there and freedom to make mistakes and growth. And you're able to kind of test the boundaries of who you are offensively and find yourself and find what your ceiling is. When the expectations as a team, you know, dramatically change. And now you're, you're like a team that you're expecting to contend. Once you go out and get Mitchell, now you're expecting to contend. And so the role is different. Your spot in the pecking order is different type of shots. Your team is going to get are all different. I think that's a very, very fair point and a legitimate point. So now you put it on Mitchell to raise him. Mm. The coaching staff, the organization to understand you've got to make sure you cultivate a guy drafted this high and max out who he can be offensively. I think he's a long way from that. I don't think this I is do a, I don't think this is a 14 or 15 a point game player at his ceiling. I think this is a guy that can get up there north of 18 maybe in that 19 to 20 point range where you're talking about a double, double player. And you know what that means? Also getting you a couple blocks on the other end and, and, and all that versatility. That's an all-star. And if, yeah. that's, if you draft a guy that high, that's what you're expecting him to turn into. I think Evan Mobley has that. And you know, the good thing about this is Adam, we're talking about him because he matters. Like he's not irrelevant. He's a guy that we both see as having all that yeah. growth potential. Now let's see it. Let's see him make it happen.
Well, we haven't even got to the defensive side. We'll get to that here in a bit where he's a monster. I mean, that's that's really his bread and butter. But to become the two-way player, that's a star is a two-way player. And you look at the numbers. You mentioned this earlier. 15 points his rookie season, 16 his sophomore season, 15 in the early go here. They're almost identical. You look at the block numbers, the steal numbers, the assist numbers. Everything kind of looks the same, even field goal attempts, field goal percentages. So it really is two years where the numbers are identical and a third year where he's on track to have identical numbers. Now, here's the thing for me, Legs. He has a very good shot, a very good jump shot. And he has a, a pretty natural touch. Like, he just has soft touch for a big man. But I don't – so he. you look at him and you think, okay, he has this um, – This he could be a skilled big. But I think he's actually pretty deficient in a lot of the connecting skills. You think about – I don't think he has the best hands. You know, there's he, bobbles, he can bobble passes or this or that where a lot of times you're grabbing a rebound, you got to grab quick and go up quick. And sometimes he just is a little slow gathering his coordination on those. Um, you look at him putting the ball on the floor. It, 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 I get nervous every time he kind of faces up and makes a move because you don't know if it's going to be smooth and fluid or if he's going to dribble it off of his foot or his defender's foot. So to me, that's where I love his game. I love his upside, but I'm a little bit skeptical just because I wish I saw a little bit more development in those parts, the parts that connect his talents and his skills. And right now, he kind of looks like most bigs at those things. No, I agree. It's a fair point. And, that, you know, you and I both, I think, understand. You look at him, you see the potential to do those things. That No one's going to no one's gonna magically add that. That just comes just through work. And and yeah. also getting an opportunity like, to be able to do those things and, and being part of, like, what they're asking you to do and play through because, you know, he's got to get better at those things. Like, he has to be able to – step out off the mid post catch turn face and and have a good jab step to go one one direction yep. to the other straight line dribble drive but he also needs to be able to go one dribble in that direction get cut off and now spin back yep. right and be able to play then through contact and get to the rim like that's the kind of thing when i mentioned chris bosh that's what bosh did so good in toronto he'd step out off the right block where he liked to get it He'd catch turn face at 16 feet. he jab more often than not go left straight line dribble drive. But if you cut that off, he would immediately spin back and now use your body against you, get you on his back, play through contact, get to the line, going to his right hand. Off. And it was all lightning quick stuff because yeah. it has to be. Unless you develop into a situation where you know they're going to allow you to isolate out a three-point line, you're going to play with the ball a little bit, but I don't think that's going to be Evan Mobley. It has to no. be one and two dribble type moves quick, decisive, with a purpose. And there's four or five that you can master in certain situations. That's all you need. He needs to add that. And that's only going to come through hard work and, and the organization kind of encouraging him to do those things. You will see that growth. So I don't think it's a, you know, we're, we've written the final chapter on his handle or his, his, his ability right. to get to a shot off the dribble or things like that. I do think at 22 years old, I think there's, there's more there for him question is going to be is it something he's really working to add and is it something the organization is encouraging that he do because there might be yeah. potential for him to add that in games that second part i think is so huge i'm, I'm so curious what the Cavs see for him in the both the short and the long term uh, on those things what types of skills do they see him developing the last thing i have for him is the strength you know he's a skinny frame he's a skinny build he's never going to be you know the the shack type of guy but one of the things that concerns me about him we talked about this last week in our first show. They play the Knicks on the front end of a two-game sort of a home and home. He gets absolutely bullied by Mitchell Robinson, Julius Randle, uh, Isaiah Hartenstein. They got physical with him. Now he bounced back in the second game, and I thought he he gave some a little bit more back, and they get the win uh, the second time around. But that's the thing that I look at, and I think there's some really good big centers in the NBA right now. And even though he's playing alongside a Jared Allen. To me, the strength part of that, the lower body strength in particular, he's kind of got high hips, really long legs, and that serves him well in a lot of different things. He, he jump, he's got a little pogo stick jump to him. But I wonder if he needs to be a little bit stronger just to be able to handle some of these bigger body guys. Definitely does. I mean, they list him. I don't know. You know, Sometimes these weights aren't accurate. They, 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 you know, I had the same weight on my basketball card my entire career. And it was like from when I came into the league and I, I had added 15 yeah. pounds probably over the course of my career and just muscle and just whatever. And so I, when I retired, I, I was listed at like 6'4", 215. And he's 6'11", 215. So <laughs> it, 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 goes, it goes to show you, you're right. And he look, he's wiry strong up top. He, he's got good functional strength up top. 
his lower body needs to get yeah. significantly stronger to hold position. Um, and, and that is going to actually be much more helpful to him offensively. Defensively, he's long enough, quick enough, and he's got really good anticipation and timing. He's going to be a major factor regardless defensively, and he already is that. The, the, where the, the, the added strength is going to help him, it's going to be offensively. Holding position when he's got a guy yes. on his back and wants the ball, and he's not pushed out from 12 feet to 20 feet by the time he catches it. Because now it's a totally a different, point. totally different possession for him if that happens. It's yeah. also getting into, like I said, I think eventually, I think he can become a good three point shooter. He doesn't, he's taken half as many this year as he has in his first couple of years. So for whatever reason, he's just not getting attempts here early in the year. The lower body strength is going to help him feel more comfortable that that is an easy shot for him. Right now, he doesn't have that. So I think it's fair to say that that's something that Evan Mobley needs to add as well. Is there anything defensively you can point to? Because the, the, this is the thing that he enters the league with. Rim protection, incredible, and, and quick reaction speed and all those different things. And then the ability to sit down and guard out on the perimeter. That's his bread and butter. And that's where he's already, I think, pretty elite at, if not already elite. But is there anything you look at and say, hey, here's where he can improve even on that side? I think, you know, as as he gets stronger and he gets a little bit probably more confident in the league, I think he can be a little bit more of a tough rebounder. Yeah, he, yeah. he you know, he's a good rebounder now, but those ones in traffic against bigger, stronger guys, and he's going to have to face some of those guys, right? When you go up against, you know, a Giannis Antetokounmpo and the guy's relentlessly coming all night, you've got to be able to hold him off. So as he gets stronger, I think he can be a better in traffic, tough rebounder. That can improve. Where he is elite right now is his ability to track guards after he either gets a switch or he jumps out on a guard, either splits or turns the corner. And now he's in a position of retreating, trying to catch the guard. His ability to track those guys to the rim and make, make them feel his presence is elite level. It's special. It's critical in this league more than ever because the makeup of the league has so many guys – uh, on the on the floor at any given time that can beat you to the rim with their athletic ability. And there's and the way you're just spaced out in general. You know, bigs are asked to cover more ground than they've ever been asked to. And that is a big part of why Evan Mobley, I think, is so special on that end of the floor and will continue to get there. But like be nice to watch a game and you see him get those really tough four guys go up for the ball. He yeah. comes down with it, snatching yeah. tight rebounds. That's when you go, okay, man, like this guy will remind you when he does that, he'll remind you of like a Kevin Garnett type of player, like when he can do that. Because KG was getting those in addition to the stuff he was doing as one of the best perimeter defensive centers this league's ever seen. Walk, 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 walk. We all silly like the mayor. 